What's up, Toombots? Tony Scungili here with his first YouTube roster review. And I figured, well, if I'm going to turn the microscope and start giving people's opinions on their roster, uh, the first one I do should be my own. Uh, and this way I can give kind of a balanced review, not only of how I do roster reviews, but how I built my roster and what I look to do. This way, you before you request one, you could see a little bit about what I intend to do to help you. Uh, most of my roster reviews are blitz-based. That doesn't mean that I will not be able to help you with certain things like progression, uh, war teams, raids, etc. And there's a bunch. So if you haven't seen my video series for blitzing yet, uh, the link for it's going to be up here somewhere. And it'll give you an idea of how to blitz to success. I'm going to go over just very briefly uh, how my blitz system works. And I'm just going to kind of show you what my roster looks like and how I use it to blitz for success. And just so you know, what I consider success is reaching top 2000, blitzing about three times a day. Anyway, so my roster is uh, like on the lower end of big. You know, like, like not huge, but bigger than most, I think. Uh, I've been playing this game for almost two years now, since, you know, day one or two of Global Launch. And I've been, you know, I've spent a good deal of money in it. Uh, ultimately, I've stopped spending, kind of in waves. I stopped spending as much, and then I spent a little bit. And lately, I've been spending pretty much nothing. And most of that's because... All of my monetary investment in this game has pretty much set me up to succeed in blitz or raids with very little work. It takes me a couple of days to take a character from unlock to gear tier 10, level 65, and I have enough materials kind of banked up that I pretty much just wait to unlock a character instead of paying for them now. And the only time I truly buy a character is if I have any kind of information about uh, an unlock. So my roster, and this is just a quick look at it. Uh, also, shameless plug, this sheet that I use is a slightly modified version of I Am Groot's MSF roster organizer tool with way more stuff than what I show on mine. His has stuff for raids, stuff for war, uh, gear tracking, inventory management. Uh, he has a, a truly phenomenal sheet, and uh, I'll put the link in the description below to uh, in case you guys want to use his sheet. Uh, I've basically taken his sheet, took all of the stuff that uh, I don't need for my reviews, and made a slightly modified version of it, but I try to give credit where credit is due. Uh, I've worked with him a couple of times to kind of key in on certain things, and, and he ended up uh, taking some of those ideas that I had and implementing them into his sheet. He's done a lot of work. Uh, and again, description below. So I've modified that sheet. And quick look at my teams. You should be able to see everything. And if not, let me zoom in a little bit for you. So you can kind of see I'm about 5.5 million TCP. Uh, my roster is pretty balanced if you take a quick look the top of my roster you can tell are you know red stars uh and some investment obviously these characters are and if i'll show you real quick most of these characters are geared tier 13 except these three and uh i just use this to keep track of what i'm doing it's a personal thing most people who do my reviews all i need is the power of the character uh, that's it and you can sort by anything you want name um, trait, whatever makes it easier for you. If you ever ask me for a review, I ask for alphabetized screenshots because sorting them by name just makes it so much easier for me to type them in. But this sheet is a great resource. I have pretty decent investment in some high impact characters, Sabretooth, Invisible Woman, Mr. Sinister, one of my favorites. And, and, you know, Carnage, you'll notice I don't have too many high red stars as you kind of track along the line or specifically too many good high red stars the hydra armor guard has always been a little bit of a disappointment as with merc lieutenant and merc riot guard but what you'll also notice is uh when i got a high red star pull on a character that wasn't too meaningful i i didn't invest in them my merc lieutenant and my merc riot guard just to show you off real quick they're gear tier 10 
six 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 four level sixty. I sure I got him up to seven star, but as you can tell, most of my characters are at seven star, and that's because. Uh, I don't invest in characters because their red stars are high. I invest in characters because they're good. Red stars will never take a bad character and make them good. They will only take a good character and make them great, or a bad character and make them, at best, usable. And Merc Lieutenant and Merc Riot Guard are two characters, while uh, okay, pretty much decent characters, uh, do not require the investment uh, for red stars. On the other side, you can notice that... Uh, there are some characters, well, you know, there's a couple of characters that uh, I have high red stars on that I, I did kind of lean into a little bit. Mordo, a little bit higher than most of my other characters uh, for Supernatural. But you'll see a lot of my roster is for red star, and that comes from quite a bit of spending. Uh, unfortunately, I also have no seven red stars, because why would I? Anyway. This is the, the quick view of a roster. One thing I do like to do is go to the bottom of every roster I review and keep track of something uh, I like to call what you're missing. You know, I don't have Beast because he's not in the game yet. I don't have Ironheart because she's not in the game yet. I don't have Red Skull because I don't buy characters I can get to four star by blitzing. So I'm not worried about them. And if you also check the bottom of my roster, you'll see it's the worst five minions in the game, uh, as well as the next five worst minions in the game. Uh, just kind of across the board. So, uh, ultimately, whenever I do a roster review, I look at the top, the bottom, and I compare to some of the other roster reviews. I've done about 200 so far. So what I can see off the top is the only thing I'm missing is the newest characters. But what I would tell myself if I were doing a review for me is to start focusing on teams now. I've unlocked many characters. Most of the legendaries I have are at 7 star and there's not much I can do. So once you reach that uh, four to five million plus TCP, which if you see my TCP series videos, you'll know it's pretty much the end game as far as progress is concerned. I'm spending a lot of time bringing teams up. So first step is, and we'll see as we go into the Blitz team separator, get a whole bunch of teams to 200k then get a whole bunch of teams to 250k and repeat the process, therefore making myself more usable uh, in raids or in war and whatever it takes. Uh, now, quick look at the review and how I do blitz reviews for everybody. Uh, I have a four team tier system. And again, please watch my blitz videos if you've never heard of this before. Uh, the first is S tier. S tier teams are teams that win in A3. Disclaimer, this is not a Blitz system that will tell you which teams you should use in the Blitz in the Blitz tiers. This is a, a system that lets you determine what your teams can do. So yes, there are some very good teams. The Brotherhood team is a very good team in Blitz, as is the BKT, the Asgardians, Phoenix, uh, and the X-Men. Those are phenomenal teams that will succeed in Blitz. However, a team only becomes an S team if they win for you. So if someone else tells you this team wins in the top tier of Blitz and you can't, well, that's not helping you, is it? So when I do my reviews, I put together the teams I believe based on personal testing or other previous Blitz reviews and feedback that should be able to win in 8-3, 95% of the time. Uh, and that's what classifies as an S team. You want somewhere between four and six S teams because they're going to be the teams that you use the most frequently to pad your score in Blitz. Uh, as for A teams, A teams are uh, kind of the sure to win teams you see all the time. They're the meta teams that can win, but once you get to 8 3, the matchups either are too meta for you to counter or they require such a crazy investment that, you know, they're not a successful Blitz team until 200k, 300k, or even higher. So you'll see maybe the Supernatural team is an example of one that doesn't reliably win in 8-3, but it'll win in 8-0, 8-1, and 8-2. That's your, that's your A-teams. There is no problem with having a ton of A-teams. The only difference between an S-team and an A-team is where they're going to win. The truth is they're going to win, so you don't have to worry, but you just have to be careful in how you use them. 
Uh, B teams, B teams are missing something, either very low investment or the, uh, I, it's hard to describe. Maybe they just don't mesh well. Uh, when I think B teams, I think the hand and I think Ant-Man and Wasp or even Kingpin and Crossbones on their own characters that don't necessarily be any meta team and don't have the synergy to push them over. That's the the core example of what a B team would be, but also any team that that isn't very well invested in or characters that just, you know, you're missing the legendary from a team like the uh, X-Men without Phoenix. Those are probably B teams. You know, if they win an A for you, congratulations. You have an A team. Go for it. You know, 8-0. No worries. But that's kind of the line. And trash teams are exactly what it sounds like. Garbage characters or garbage investment in characters. Any character that's under like two or three K power is probably in the trash tier only because it's very unreliable. And if you take a quick look, you'll see where the fights are supposed to take place. So, you know, 95% in a three, 95% in eight zero eight one, et cetera, et cetera. You also notice the max uses, uh, as a rule, you don't want to use any team too many times in a blitz. There's a common misconception that you take your strongest team and use it forever. And that's how you're going to win. Uh, that's not going to help you uh that's actually being very inefficient you're going to end up doing more work for less points than somebody who knows how to blitz so don't do that uh and just kind of keep track of this s teams can be used three extra times or you know 25 50 75 charges per team uh a teams you can use them an extra time but since they're not only not reliable in a3 they are uh getting you less points in 8081 you don't really need to worry too much about using those charges, especially if you have at least four or five S teams. Uh, and then B teams, you can use them one extra time if you have a lower roster and you're trying to push yourself up, but ultimately uh, it's not too big of a deal. Uh, you just kind of want to use them specifically on your opening rotation to get you to tier seven and eight as fast as possible. And then later you want to use them to intentionally lose or uh, you know, drop down a tier in a battle so that you can get your wins in with your A teams. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's take a quick look at the teams I've designed. These are the teams that I use every blitz. I have, as you can tell, eight S teams, 12 A teams, and then three B and two trash teams. But at this point, I kind of group them together. I basically have five teams I use to reset blitzes when I choose to. The teams I'm using is a slightly modified Marauders team, which I mean, we only have four of them, right? So I'm using Merc Lieutenant. Got to put them somewhere, I guess. Uh, and this team has been pretty reliable for me. Uh, as a note, if you are using a Sinister or Marauders team in Blitz, you want to take counterintuitively the strongest team with the biggest problem. So you want to fight the X-Men or the Ultron team so that you can make a copy of that character and hopefully uh, win with it. Uh, the next team you'll probably notice, it's a slightly modified uh, Minerva Guardians or Guardianerva, whatever you want to call it. I don't need Thanos because Thanos is really for a sustain level in raids and keeping the energy flowing into the right characters. In Blitz, it's about as quickly as possible. You want those matchups done. But I do have Minerva just in case Rocket dies. So I have basically two tanks, uh, some survivability with Groot, and a whole bunch of damage in Star Wars and Rocket. Minerva's only job is to resurrect either you know Groot uh, or Drax if they need the taunt or Rocket if he happens to go down, but that is going to keep them kind of going, especially in an early game. Uh, this is how I've been using it. I used to use Mantis. I found that my Rocket was dying quite frequently. Maybe that's because the separation of power was so great. Ultimately, this is what I ended up with. It's been working for me pretty consistently. Uh, as of right now, my Toad and my Blob are not powerful enough to be placed next to Juggernaut, Magneto, and Pyro. They're about 30k. I want to get them up a little bit more. So in the meantime, I'm using Kingpin and Crossbones. Uh, they don't really add much to the team. Kingpin makes Juggernaut a little bit harder, and Crossbones gives you a little bit extra spread damage. This is also an acceptable war team, as I found, but until I get Toad and Blob, I'm just using them because their powers are pretty in line. And I've had no problem clicking auto with this team most of the time because of just the sheer number of AoE damage and the CC from Magneto. As for this team, a lot of people in the stream call this the Tony Scangeli special. Uh, more or less, I just throw Captain America, Black Widow, and Captain Marvel on a team. 
And then it's kind of a toss up. If you have Loki, but no Asgardians, you put Loki there and then the CM Loki combo immediately nerf somebody. You can use a very high investment agent Coulson uh, to make sure that Captain Marvel is constantly called with his assist and you're just getting a whole bunch of extra damage on the team. Uh, this particular version I'm using for a little bit more sustain, uh, just in case Mantis needs to throw a heal or do a targeted stun. These things come up quite frequently. Ultimately, uh, Captain Marvel is usually strong enough to carry a team on her own. So this is one of the special teams that I end up using. I don't like to use Captain Marvel on the Brawlers because the Brawlers can win without her. And it's about being efficient. More teams will always be better than one strong team. And since this team will win in A3 uh, and I get a whole nother team out of using the Brawlers separately, you can kind of see where it's going to go. Uh, the next is Ultron and four people that Ultron are going to carry. You'll notice that these guys are all around the same power. That's because of my Ultron team. The only character I ever try to keep with him is Hawkeye. It sounds crazy. Hawkeye works very well when you're fighting defenders because his slow targeting Punisher will allow you to ult Punisher with Ultron before he takes a turn and kills everything. At that point, the entire rest of the team can't beat you because Punisher is the only one that really hurts. So... Everyone else on that team, I tend to just throw tanks or healers or whomever I need to. And then I click auto after I slow Punisher. They win the fight for me pretty easily. Uh, Phoenix, the version of this team, again, in Blitz, that I think is incredibly important is Storm instead of Psylocke. You don't need the survivability that Psylocke gives. As a matter of fact, if your Phoenix doesn't die, that could hurt. You want to win this on turn two or three. That's why it's called Blitz, not Sloats. So... Sorry about that. So uh, I have Cyclops there instead of Psylocke and Storm stays in. The assists will help uh, as well as the potential to slow your opponents or do one giant AoE depending on what you need. Uh, you'll notice there's a huge power difference between my team and that's because it doesn't matter. Phoenix does all the work anyway. Uh, but at this level, my team is winning on auto fight. So yours should also be close. Uh, the next one is a little bit lower, even though it's pretty high in power. It's the Fury Shield team. And the reason I have it marked low is because they are slow. They will win. They will beat the Defenders. They will beat any mishmash team in A3, but they are slow, and you can't auto with them because they love to waste time. So if the team takes me eight minutes to win a Blitz fight, I'm not being efficient. Uh, so I keep them in there, but I, a lot of times I'll, I'll either force the fight or wait to see a matchup that I know I can take with them. A uh, very easy one, that's when I'll apply them. Uh, and then another auto fight team is the Asgardians. Uh, mine are 212k, and they are winning on auto against pretty much any team. I don't even look anymore. Probably not X-Men, but I don't know. Maybe I have. I haven't been paying attention. But uh, I've seen them as low as 80k wins. So for my money, these are the teams that I would more or less recommend. Again, please remember, S teams are unique to everyone. These are the teams of mine that win. Please feel free to try them, but if they don't win, uh, it's nothing wrong with you. It might just be because of how the investment broke down or the right character has the right red stars, etc., etc. You're going to be in control of your own S teams, but I will do anything in my power to help you if you ask for a review. Uh, moving to the A team, these are the sure-to-win teams you've probably heard about. Power Armor, Defenders... Wakandans. Uh, I might even bring this one up to an S team, the uh, Inhumans. But uh, you can tell I have a pretty decent spread on my Inhumans. They're not incredibly balanced, and uh, Black Bolt and Yo-Yo are really high. The rest are really low. So that could be changing it for me. Yours might be way more balanced. Your might be weaker, but also more balanced and better. Um, I don't know. For me, this team is very reliable in 8, 0, 8, 1, and 8, 2, so I call them an A team. If that changes, I'll let you know. Also, if you don't have Black Bolt, there is no uh, switch. There's no alternate to any of these teams. Uh, that's a question I get all the time. These teams that I'm building are teams that work as teams. Uh, if you need teams to be a little bit more special, more unique, like, for example, this team right here, or uh, this Ultron team, or maybe this modified Brotherhood team, uh, that's kind of where the, the roster reviews come in. Um, some things don't have... There's no substitutes for some things. If you don't have Magneto, who do you use? Nobody. You just build a different team. So, And again, like I said, your versions of these teams may be winning in 8-3. They may not be winning in 
Uh, everyone's roster is different. These are the teams that win for me. Hopefully this information helps you. Uh, this is what I'm doing with the Brawlers team. I basically just have the extra two uh, Brawlers left out of their previous team, Silock and Gamora, America Chavez, and Deadpool. Miss Marvel does all of the work on this team anyway, so as long as the other guys have Hero and Brawler on them, they'll be fine. AIM team is functionally an S team, but only in certain matchups. You can basically auto-fight a Brotherhood matchup, and you have a very good chance of beating characters like the Hydra team, or Power Armor. That's up in the air sometimes. But they, they can win a lot of fights in A3. The problem is you don't always get those fights, therefore the team is unreliable in A3, so it's an A team, but it is winning all the time in, in matchups where you're not punching up too high. And again, all the meta teams are going to show up here at least for one second. And uh, these are the ideas of when you get your team and you balance them out, you should be okay to use these in 8, 8, 0, and 8, 1. And it's kind of a nice little climb because for every three teams, every time you reset from 8, 3 down, you get three fights. So try to keep them in multipliers of three, you know? So if you have nine, that means you have to reset three times or get lucky in 8, 3 once, you know what I mean? It'll work itself out. Uh, and then we go to the bottom, the B teams. A lot of these teams just aren't reliable for me at 8-0. So I just use them early and then I just kind of reset them. Now, if you may not have noticed, I'm already at 20 teams, which is the maximum number of save slots we have right now. No big deal. We'll move on as we get more save slots, probably relatively soon. And some of these teams are better than others. Some of these teams are using characters inefficiently. The point is you can't have too many teams because my blitz rotation is already 20 teams. You know, I have 12 teams that win an A and I have eight teams that win an S. That's a 20 team rotation. If each fight takes two minutes, which it doesn't, but if each fight took uh, as much as two minutes, then, you know, that's, that's a 40 minute rotation. That's, that's forever. That's the exact opposite of trying to be efficient. So I don't need to make the absolute best team. I just need to make the team that wins. And sure, you can min-max a little bit on points, but ultimately, if the team will win, especially if the team will win on auto-fight, uh, then you're a lot better off. And using these guys just to quickly reset and power through will be fine. And then these are my B teams. These are roughly the worst 10 characters in the game. Uh, yep, these are roughly the worst 10 characters in the game, almost without question. Yep, I'm right. Worst 10 characters in the game. I'll do that video next, right? Uh, last thing I want to show you is, well, we'll go to that in a second. Second to last thing I want to show you is how I do a, a rotation chart for most players. You can kind of track right here. I have eight S teams, etc. You've seen this before. I base all my rotations on one strategy for Blitz. On the opening day, you have 500 charge in your bank and you do not claim your daily 100 or your medic supply run. This is exclusively Western Hemisphere players. If you play in the EU, uh, China, actually anywhere in Asia or, or Africa, it, it doesn't really work this way for you because of when your resets work, uh, but it doesn't matter too much. It's just reverse what I'm about to say, if that makes sense. And again, the video series covers it. Uh, I basically use one team all the way up, and the reason I do that is because I have so many Blitz teams that I can afford to. Uh, if I do one fight with all my teams, as you can see, Trash 2, Trash 1, blah, 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 all the way up here. If I do one fight with all of the teams, I end up at one fight in into Tier 7. That's when my break starts, my 20-minute, or hour and 20-minute break, uh, before I could start again, maybe a little bit less, hour and a half, and... At that point, uh, I don't even start with my A12, A11, A10, because I know that those characters are uh, going to extend the amount of time I'm blitzing anyway. I basically take the strongest versions of teams, A6 through A1, to fight all the way up in the second part of the rotation to A3. Once I'm in A3, I use all my S teams, powered the score up. Now is when we spend those charges I was talking about earlier. Now I use... Uh, Five of my teams, uh, three times each, 375 total charges. Then I claim my 100 daily. Then I claim my 270 from the medic supply run. And that puts me at about 495 charges for the day. Like, end of, like, that's how many I have at the end of the day. And I've padded my score by quite a bit of points using the most reliable teams I have. Catch me? So, after that, 
it's about being efficient with the time. Uh, you'll notice it says Uber Black Teams. It's a super secret thing that I'm going to show you here for the first time. Well, unless you're from my stream, I guess. And uh, after that, I do something called a daily rotation guide, which is uh, how you do a daily rotation. It's guaranteed all of your S teams, then as many A teams as you can afford to, right? Uh, if you can't do a full blitz rotation because you have 12 A teams like me, try to keep it as close to 15 teams as you can. So if you have a ton of teams that you know win an A3 very reliably, do all of those first. Maybe it's five, maybe it's eight. And then use the rest of your A teams as you progress. The more A teams you get, the more points you'll be able to get overall. The more S teams you get, the same thing applies. The only difference is on every other day, I just use my top three teams. Now, what you see here is the phrase Uber Black. That's the last thing I'm going to cover here. Uh, the Uber Black teams I have are basically five teams that I've generated of the strongest characters I have. And, well... You can't balance everything, right? Because you have some characters for Dark Dimension. You have some characters that are good in raids, especially if you're doing U7. Uh, and things just kind of go out of whack a little bit. But because so many characters are so good, either together or on their own, Ultron, Phoenix, Captain Marvel, Black Bolt, uh, I'm able to build teams around those characters just being held by the strongest other characters. You can take a quick look at these teams that I put together. Uh, they're not perfect, and I wouldn't recommend these teams for you. I recommend you do something like this. Uh, Ultron, Carnage, Scientist Supreme, Hela, and Jessica Jones. This is the debuff team featuring Carnage. Basically a U7 team, right? Except Carnage, but he just happens to be strong, and Ultron's strong enough to carry anyway. Uh, Phoenix, War Machine, Nick Fury, Punisher, and Shield Security. Another team that will uh, pretty much allow Phoenix to die and flip. Uh, hopefully War Machine ults after she flips and then just kills everyone. Uh, and even then, Punisher will... You know, don't AOE with Punisher until you know they flip, but you should be okay. And placement on these teams is kind of wonky. I can't save them because we don't have enough save slots. But you can take a quick look at what I've done with these teams, see their total power, see the amount of points they generally generate up here, generally generate up here, and you'll have a really good idea of what's going to happen. Uh, and then I have the Uber Blue teams, which are for the daily rotation. These are just the three power teams I have, which are built around the three strongest characters in the game, Phoenix, Ultron, Captain Marvel, and you'll even notice Star, uh, Black Bolt made it into this team too. So again, I basically take characters that are going to be strong enough to win a Blitz fight on their own, and take the strongest other characters I have, put them together, generate some high power teams, and pad my score this way. At the top of the sheet, what you're going to see is a whole bunch of calculations. I'm going to make them real quick so you understand. This is what happens if you win every single fight with your A teams and your S teams. It's kind of crazy, right? Uh, this is what happens if you only win your fights with your S teams. So a nice little average is what happens when you win with a little bit over half of the teams. So I have a total of 20 teams. This is if I win with my 10 strongest teams to 12 strongest teams. Not everything works all the time like that. So these are the, the points I expect to get per rotation and points per rotation are important because it lets you know how many rotations you have to do to reach the goal. Uh, also, this gives you an idea of how many charges it costs. So if I want to use 150 charges, which is two teams three times each, I'll get an extra 400,000 or half a million roughly. If I want to use three teams, the, the number I explained down here every day, I'm basically padding my score by about 600,000 points. So add that to an average rotation that turns one rotation from a 1 million to a 1.5 million, give or take. And of course, the 375, which is the one I'm, I'm doing at the beginning, is almost a double rotation. So if you take the opening rotation uh, score, add it the bonus points, and then a little bit of points for the first rotation, you know, the one where you got all the way up to eight, I'm getting at least 2.4 million. Honestly, I'm getting more than 2.4 million, but this is the lowest I, I could get, assuming everything kind of goes mediocre for me. So if I blitz uh, three times a day, Monday, Tuesday, oh, I'm sorry, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, you know, uh, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So three times a day for three days, which is the entirety of a blitz after your first opening rotation. I'm going to get 
probably between 11 and 13 million points. That's assuming, you know, the average line uh, the entire way. If I use the charges that I've uh, recommended, both in the opener and every day, the 225, I'm going to be basically a stone's throw away from 15 million, which is pretty much the upper limit of what uh, you should be able to do. Uh, your roster should be worth roughly uh, one third of your total blitz score, blitzing three times a day. I know the three is right. It's crazy. But yeah, you, so I have a five and a half million power roster. So I should be able to get at least 15 to 16 million points uh, per blitz. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. Two million can usually easily get six million on their blitz score. And this is, again, blitzing three times a day. These numbers aren't made up. Uh, stop by my stream and ask anyone I've done a review for. They will confirm that this is exactly uh, how it works if you follow the system. But that's pretty much a good estimate of what it's gonna, uh, what I'm going to get if I blitz three times a day. Now, if I think like, hey, I want to blitz four times a day, you know, just four times three is 12, I get 18 million. And you're going to be crazy and no life it. You're going to blitz a total of, you know, 20 times, like six times a day or so. That's 27. These are numbers that I'm never going to try to accomplish, but you might. So go crazy. Alternately, you can also keep track. So say there's a prediction you want to follow. You want to hit 15 million on this blitz. You just keep your current score updated right here, and I'll show you right here. I'm at 2.4. I'm going to change it to 4.4, and it's going to tell you uh, roughly the number of rotations you have to do before you reach your target. And this is assuming, you know, the average luck. So it's somewhere between 9 and 10, which is in line at this point. Previously, if I finish my day one, it's telling me I have to do, again, between 9 and 10 total rotations to hit 15 million. You can tell these numbers kind of check out. Uh, that's because it's taking into account all of the numbers that the spreadsheet is generating and going on. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this. I have a couple of reviews I'm going to be doing on YouTube for a lot of players. They're not going to be this long. This is the explanation one. Most of them are going to be about 10 minute long videos. I just want you to see uh, how I apply my review structure to other players blitzing and I can't guarantee you'll have a YouTube review if you do request a roster review from me. I tend to reserve YouTube reviews for uh, something unique or a, um, a particular quirk in someone's team or maybe someone invested very early in the wrong or the right teams and it paid off for them. Like maybe you were investing in Hydra early and oh my, their rework happened. So that's kind of what I keep track of when it comes to these reviews. I will always uh, take a review. I do uh, every Wednesday. I do three roster reviews live on stream. So feel free to stop by. Hopefully you can get a little bit of understanding of what I do when I do other players roster reviews as well. Uh, and if there's something interesting or unique about your roster that I think would help the entire community just to like learn or, or be exposed to, then I might request a uh, permission to do it on YouTube. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, please check out the related videos. Hopefully they'll help you understand this series more and stop by my stream, which is somewhere in this conversation. Uh, have a good night. Have a great day. Uh, I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.